able to live as a child forever. We all Adams believe in this mythical theory because it's for Adams to believe that kids have nothing to worry about. As providers and caretakers, adults tend to live and believe that the world of children is happy and carefree. Well, in this competitive world, let's say children do face stress, not once, but many a times. I, understand you, on behalf of School of India, welcome all of you to this webinar. School of India has always believed in helping and supporting our children to move towards be independent in learning and in taking care of themselves. School of India and Fortis have joined hands to deliver a high quality, comprehensive understanding of how you parents take care of your child. The main motto of this webinar is to give you an insight into your child's mind. We realize that once we understand, we can give child, we can give our children a very good upbringing and we have been constantly striving at School of India to give you parents and your children different aspects and analysis on life. And today we have a facilitator Dr. Anjana Rao who is going to be taking us through the session on stress and happy children. Uh, Dr. Anjana has six years of experience and she's been working with Focus Hospital Bangalore as a consulting psychiatrist. She has been a resident. Uh, she has been a resident in child and adolescent psychiatry, and has published over twenty journals, um, in journals in of great repute and international and national repute. Uh, I'm very happy to welcome Dr. Anjana to this session today. Hello everyone. Uh, hi, I'm Anjana. I'm a consultant psychiatrist at Focus Healthcare Bangalore. Welcome to today's webinar on a happy and stress-free child. Uh, I'm going to be speaking about the different parenting styles, causes of stress in your children and how you can help your child beat exam stress and helping your child cope with stress in general. Now stress levels are rising in children and it is becoming increasingly important to identify and help children manage it in a positive way. So let's begin with reflecting upon our own parenting style. So to begin with, the first one is what is known as the authoritarian parenting style. Here, a parent imposes strict inflexible rules on children the relationship is mainly controlling by the parents and it's mainly a unidirectional communication that is seen between the parent and the child. The next one is a permissive style. Here there is no limit setting by the parent and also there is an unpredictable parent harshness towards the child. Here the relationship is mainly indulgent. The third one is what is known as the neglectful, evident from what it is. Here there is a non-involvement in child's rearing. The parent does not pay adequate attention to their children. And the relationship between the parent and the child is mainly rejected. The next one is that known as the authoritative reciprocal type. So here, there are firm rules that are established by the parent towards their children and there is a shared decision making in a warm and loving environment. Here, there is a bi-directional communication between the parent and the child. So let's come to the common mistakes that adults usually make. So how many of us do this? Look, your friend Suraj stood first in mathematics. Now a lot of parents have a tendency of doing this. You may be doing this as well, but you may be doing this in order to motivate your child. But let me tell you that you are doing more harm than good to your child. 
this comparison between other children or maybe their own circle it tends to lead to stress lower self esteem in children and it distances the child from you so instead what i would suggest is try and use a positive approach if your child has for even one mark more than that learn to note it and appreciate it so as the saying goes like father like son or she is definitely her mother's child so it is imitation and modeling that passes on traits to your children now today even scientific evidence shows that children whose parents smoke are more likely to smoke themselves while children who are raised in homes with frequent domestic violence are more likely to abuse their own spouses or even get abused but on the flip side the good thing is that your children will also learn positive behaviors from you so always remember be the adult that you want your child to be so if screaming at our kids work i think parenting would parenting would have been a cake walk isn't it it would have been so simple all you had to do was shout at your child to change your child but that's not how it works by yelling what really happens is that your child will learn to mentally shut you off and stop listening to you as soon as you start yelling your child will also learn that overpowering someone is how you can get things done easily so do not shout at your children do not yell instead try and have a calm one on one communication to get your point across to your child if your child yells at you calmly tell your child don't shout i don't like it and walk away if they throw a tantrum simply ignore it and don't pay heed to it don't give it more attention than it actually deserves so it's very important to be consistent in your reaction to the child regardless whether your child is being rude or whether your child is portraying a positive behavior your reaction to everything that your child does has to be consistent it has to be consistent across all settings that is very important it has to be remembered if your child is showing you some positive behavior you need to make sure that you consistently reward the child for this and if he is disobeying rules in that case punishments as well has to be consistent so what you need to remember is that consistency is the key and it has to be the same across all settings which is very important corporal or physical punishment fails to stop use of an unwanted behavior you need to remember that by punishing your child it's not going to stop the behavior of your child on the other hand it's going to make the child model aggression the child is going to watch you show aggressive behavior and learn the same from you it tends to increase violence in children not only that it arouses negative emotions towards parents not only towards parents but also towards the peers and friends and teachers it increases impulsivity the child tends to show certain behaviors without forethought it diminishes your child's ability to cope with negative emotions so very often i get to hear my child does cricket lesson or school dance guitar and chess lessons after school tuitions for math science and english after that all on the same day apart from this there are other classes 
the children do even in the weekends. So if you ask me, I would attribute all of this to deep-rooted parental anxiety. We all fear that our child will be left. We don't want our child to be the only one who does not play a piano or who can't play basketball. But let me tell you, overstuffing their routine is mainly going to increase their anxiety and emotional distress. So allow and let your kids learn how to manage their own time. Let them manage their boredom and let them build their own interests for simply enjoying a hobby rather than for an achievement. So here, here are a few questions that I need you to ask yourself. Am I being too rigid? Is my behavior a result of my fear or frustration? Am I being reasonable here? Can a little flexibility benefit my child or others in this particular situation? So if the answer to these questions is yes, then I think it's time to change your parenting style. You must remember that inflexible parenting can lead to insecurity, dependency and poor coping skills in your child. So try and avoid this as much as possible. So now I may ask, what is the ideal role of parents? So what I always say is, an ideal role of a parent is that of a facilitator and not that of an Okay, so make your presence felt to your child, not only physically, but also convey this verbally to your child. Let your child know that you are there for him or her and let them know this verbally. Make it a point to take interest in hearing about their day. If they don't come up with it themselves, go to them and ask them how their day was. Listen to what they have to say and listen carefully. Express your concern when the child seems upset. Do not ignore your child. And also remember to give your child adequate space. So, now every child is different. So, what you need to do is you need to acknowledge your child's uniqueness. Okay. Even two siblings may be different from each other. So, what you need to do is modify your parenting approach to suit the child. Accept that your parenting approach will be different towards each child. Just because you saw a particular parent Treat your children in a particular way, that does not mean that you do the same because all children are different and you need to modify your parenting according to your child. Now, emotional regulation is very important in children. It takes time for the children to be able to understand their own emotions. So, you can be a facilitator in this. It is very, very crucial and important to assist children in managing their emotions. Help them acknowledge and correctly label emotions. When they are upset, they need to learn that this is how being upset feels. And this is what they can do in order to fix the situation. Teach appropriate ways of expressing negative emotions. If your child is angry, or if you are angry, if you tend to show aggression towards someone or something, your child is going to watch that and learn the same from you. So stress in children and teens. Now children and teens notice and react to stress in their family and also experience their own stress. So which means your child has much more stress to be with than you do. So it is very important to recognize stress in children and teens and also help them with 
healthy coping strategies, which I am going to be discussing with you. So the common causes of stress in school children, as we are, uh, we are all aware, the number one is what I would uh, say is exams, because that is something that every child has to go through, which is universal stress for all the children. The academic pressure can be overwhelming in children. Hectic routines made especially by parents for children can lead to stress in school children. Bullying, of course, can lead to stress. In majority of the cases of bullying, not only the child who is being bullied, but also the child who is bullying, both of them need help. Peer pressure is something which is stressful for children. And even lifestyle changes like poor eating habits or poor sleeping habits can cause stress in children. Now, apart from this, you should also be aware that there are many other things in which can lead to stress in children. Okay, being away from home, starting a new school, moving to a new location, and being separated from parents or caregivers, worrying about their changing bodies, especially in teenagers, worrying about getting along with others in school, social conformity is what children worry a lot about, worrying about future. Now, all of this can also lead to stress in children. So how do we screen for problems in children? So here you need to be aware that there are different developmental areas in a child's life. Okay, the psychological or the emotional development in children, when there is a problem in this area, this can lead to emotional dysregulation, temper tantrums, increased irritability, or even poor self-esteem. The social development, low self-care behavior, ineffective communication, not only with parents, but also peers, friends, teachers, poor interpersonal relations. Now coming to academic development, low grades, poor class participation, learning difficulties in all, in all these children, you need to make sure that you try and uh, interact with the teacher of your children as much as possible, not only to discuss about the academics, but also to discuss about their overall behavior, their interpersonal relationship with their friends and so on. So the behavioral development, inadequate toilet training, this can either be primary to begin with because of inadequate toilet training, or this can be secondary, much later in life, which can uh, there can be abuses or uh, involuntary bedwetting, bullying, truancy, or defined authority. All these can be seen. So, since exam stress is one of the most important or uh, universal stress in children, so here's how you can help the exam stress in your children. So, one thing is that too little stress may result in boredom or sleep. So, too little stress is not good either. Too much stress may cause an unproductive anxiety level or it can also lead to disorganization. While on the other hand, moderate levels of stress may actually improve performance and efficiency in your child. So, some amount of stress is required for optimal performance. So, what are the ways of effective planning that you can help your child with? So, the timetable that you can see on your screens is a perfect example of how a timetable should not look like. If this is what you should not be doing. Planning a rigid timetable can lead to stress in your child. Make sure that your child has a little short break in between. Encourage your child to keep a check on how much time goes away in breaks. 
and make sure that they are independent in this as much as possible. You can facilitate, you can guide, you can help, but at the end of the day, they need to be treated by the parents. So here's how people usually think it is. So how many of us have told our children that if you want good grades, you can't have both social life and adults. Or if you want good grades, or if you want a good social life, you can't have good grades and enough sleep. Right? But this is how it really is. There are so many other areas in your child's life which your child needs to manage. So how can your child manage all of this all together? So here's how. Okay, so this is the kind of table that you need to be making in order to see which of the activity is more important. So you need to be dividing whether the activity or the task in hand is important or not and whether it is due soon or not. So the activity which is most important and due soon falls on your number one priority. So that becomes your priority. Okay. So for example say your child has a basketball match coming up in three days and a school project say in 10 days. Now first you need to see which one of these two are important. But suppose both of them are important. And then you need to see which one of these two is due soon. So if the basketball match is due soon, that is what is going to be your child's priority. And once the match is over, that is when the school project will take the number one spot. So this is how an ideal timetable should be. Okay, first list out all the activities, see how much of time is required to finish this activity, put it up under the expected time and see how much time is actually taken to complete this activity. And if there is a large discrepancy between the two, try and identify as to what the reason is. So when your child is setting a goal, they need to make sure that the goal is specific. Okay, for example, it has to be either maths or science or history. That is, the goal needs to be specific. Apart from this, it also needs to be measurable. Is it one chapter? Is it two chapters that needs to be done? Or is it ten pages? It needs, it needs to be measurable. And it has to be achievable and realistic. You cannot expect your child to finish say 10 to 12 chapters on one particular day. It has to be realistic and has to be time-bound. How much of time will your child take to finish this particular chapter or finish this particular task? So, now procrastination is very commonly seen in children. Okay. What they tend to do is tend to push off a certain activity or say studying for example. So what are the usual reasons which lead to procrastination? So the most common reasons is fear of failure. They fear that they may fail and that leads to pushing off the task further. Confusion. Which of these tasks do I do first? Both science and math seem to be as important to me. So which one do I choose first? The confusion or lack of having a priority. Perfectionism. My parents want me to be perfect or I want myself to be perfect. This can lead to procrastination. Task difficulty or even unpleasantness. Unpleasantness or just like what's So how to overcome procrastination? Firstly, you need to identify excuses. What is the excuse? Why is my child procrastinating? Help them work on easier tasks first. It, it builds up their confidence. It encourages them. Break larger tasks into smaller units. 
Breaking them into smaller units makes the task easier for them and gives them a sense of achievement to finish that particular task. Encourage them to seek help when the task seems difficult. Now, the usual vectors of a child for seeking help is firstly the parent, then the teacher, and even friends, and if all fails, maybe professionals. Eliminate all distractions and encourage them to have frequent breaks to avoid wearing down. And always remember the reward. When they finish certain tasks. So, what are the tips for effective study? So, how long do you think one should study at a stretch? Is it just for two hours? Is it 45 minutes? Or is it as long as you can? How many of his parents try to push the child and tell them? I think you should study for as long as you can. So ideally, human attention span lasts for only about 45 minutes. So, make sure that your child studies only for 45 minutes at a stretch and take frequent breaks in between. So, what to do during these study breaks? So what your child can do is maybe leave the room, go for a walk, listen to some music, talk to someone or do something that the child likes. So here are some uh, exercises that your child can benefit from to improve concentration. There are certain cancellation exercises that your child can do. Maybe take a paragraph from a newspaper or, or a magazine and strike out a particular alphabet from the entire paragraph. Or listening to music, okay, focusing, focusing on a single on instrument while, while listening to a song. And even solving puzzles and mazes, mazes helps yes. improving concentration. So here are some do's and don'ts during exam season. Help your child focus on basic studies. Help them or encourage them with positive self-talk. Make sure your child has regular sleep break pattern. Encourage them to have outdoor activities. Don't restrict all their outdoor activities during the exams. Encourage them and help them talk to friends and family. So what they should not be doing or what you should not be doing is comparing them, letting them know that look, your our neighbor's kid has finished so much of their syllabus and you can. that is not something what you should be doing. Do not worry about the results. The more you worry about the results, the more your child is going to be pressurized and stressed about it. Do not make them overwork. Do not encourage them to drink caffeine or medicate themselves. It's a myth that coffee, caffeine helps. And don't make them stop enjoying or living a normal routine just because it is exam. So what can we parents do for our children? So what we can do is help the child identify his or her strengths. Don't go on pointing out their mistakes and weaknesses. Instead, help them identify what their strengths are and let them build on. Help them stick to a routine that they've prepared for themselves. Encourage your child to stick to a routine of going to bed at a reasonable time. Make sure that they have adequate sleep. Motivate them to sleep regularly and also make time for fun and exercise. Encourage your child to relax before they go to bed after concentrating or working hard for long periods of time. So parent support is very important for a child during exams. Make sure, Make sure you are available to your child when they require your support. Help them and encourage them with their fears. Teach them that avoiding is not the right way. Focus on the positives in any situation. If they 
come and tell you that I have so much of portion left. Make them look at the positive side that you have also finished so many chapters so far. Encourage your child to express himself or herself and have a non-judgmental attitude towards them. It is very important to not be judgmental when they express something towards you. Deal with your own stress effectively so that you can be there for your child when the child needs you. And a model approach to behavior would be your child is more likely to imitate your behavior. Always remember this. So be positive and do what's best to be a great role model to your child. So, listening carefully and calmly to your child is very important to help them cope with stress. Always try your best to listen to your child attentively. Let them know that you care for them. Make it a point to ask your child what's wrong. Don't always wait for them to come to you. Listen to all that your child has to say. Be patient and caring. Do not react in a judgmental way or blame or shout at your child for this. Because if you do that, your child will not come around the next time to share this with you again. So always remember that sometimes just being there for your child is So when a child is able to talk about their feelings and know what would be causing it, it becomes easier for the child to manage their own emotions. So when your child seems upset, softly ask them, what is it that you are feeling exactly right now? Now your child may say, my heart is beating hard or my hands are trembling or I feel sick in my stomach. Teach them how to listen to their bodies. You can also ask them what do you think caused this? And help them to think about what happened exactly before this situation. So that they are able to portray that this particular situation is what has led to this feeling upset. Okay, and lastly, also help them label it. Okay, offer them words like sad, frustrated, embarrassed or scared. They need to know how to label the emotions that they are going through. Now identifying triggers of behaviors in your children is very important. Be a good observer. And also, think about the situations where your child seems to struggle. Try and make your child aware of that and be aware of that yourself as well. And think of ways how you can change your own behavior in such situations so that you can help cope or help them cope with it. Now, help your child think of what they can do to solve a problematic situation. Sit down with your child, talk about what are the possible options and which one of these options is best for them. Support the good ideas that your child come up with and add to them if necessary. Help them chalk out a plan of how to execute a solution that they'll come up with. Eventually, trust me, your child will be able to do this by themselves without you. Now, there may be situations where you can't do anything to fix or solve it. So, in these situations, you need to help your child engage in an activity that they love. So, when they have calmed down, Point it out to them, let them know that look, after doing this, you seem to have calmed down a lot now. 
to find something that makes them laugh and do set aside a little time to play with your favorite games and this is an excellent way to bond with your child as well always remember have patience with your child don't lose your cool in front of your child if you do that they are going to learn how to push your buttons and they are going to also model the same behavior they are going to do the same thing when they are upset or when they are angry manage your own stress unless you manage your own stress you will not be able to be there for your child and model healthy coping strategies do what you think is right and let them see and learn so i'm going to be ending this webinar with a few tips for parenting the certain things to remember for parents is to appreciate your child's efforts and not just the end results don't focus a lot on the outcome instead focus and see appreciate not what your child has done and let him or her know about it. convey your interest in your child's life don't assume that just by being there your child will think that you are interested in their life make sure you verbally convey this adapt your parenting to fit your child it may be so for different children of yours itself for two different siblings you may have to change your parenting style communication is the key here communicate well with your children avoid comparing your child to other children or sibling be consistent in your approach avoid any physical punishment it's not going to help you in any way spend quality time with your kids and always remember treat your child with respect we have a fortis exam helpline you can always contact us for any queries any problems regarding exam stress so this is our team at banerata road fortis i'm available in the opd from monday to saturdays or between 10 and 4 you can come and contact me at any time we are now open for a live uh, question and answer session so you can type in your questions Uh, there is a question here uh, by Dr. Madhumati. Uh, how can you recognize if a child is stressed? Now, uh, there are certain symptoms that you can note in your child when your child is stressed. There can be irritability. There can be change in their mood. There can be change in their sleeping habits. There can be change in their appetite or eating habits. Apart from this, there can also be Uh, oppositional behavior that can be shown by the children towards parents or teachers there can also be signs like bedwetting or other odd behaviors that can be seen in children or even truancy can be seen in children so these are a few uh, red flags which should be able to tell you that your child is stressed
there's a question uh, by Arundhati uh, which says how to handle hyperactive kid is there any remedy now uh, hyperactivity uh, the activity level itself in children can vary depending upon their stage of development usually children uh, who are younger tend to be more hyperactive but if their hyperactivity is way above the normal levels or if it is causing a problem in any one of their settings like home setting or schools or if it is affecting their academics then it may need to be looked into it may need to be uh, corrected now uh, again hyperactivity is usually a symptom of uh, adhd or uh, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder so in such cases the treatment is usually uh, either psychological or behavioral management or a pharmacological management Uh, it depends upon the level of hyperactivity that a child has okay, there is a question by malini bhardwaj who says uh, my child doesn't take stress it actually my stress what to do about it uh, i think uh, there are several healthy ways of coping with your stress it depends upon what the cause of stress is uh, if it is a very hectic routine that is causing stress what you can do is you plan your day effectively and uh, uh, again uh, coping with it could be with uh, effective planning and by problem solving uh, apart from this i think uh, you can use humor as a part of your daily life to help you cope with it also relaxation that you to a great extent uh again it it needs to be seen what exactly the reason of stress is so that i can uh, help you cope with your own stress there's a question uh, by ashish shrivastav which says how do we measure the stress level like too less moderate or too high Uh, i think for this what you can do is uh, you need to be better observers you need to reflect upon your daily life you need to reflect and see how much of stress you are taking maybe you can talk to your spouse family others so that uh, what we can observe in you uh, may be different from what you uh, are reflecting by yourself so you can help and reach out to others and ask them whether they think there is any change in your behavior so this can help you measure how much of stress you are taking It is a question by uh, Namrata, which says how to improve patience level of kids. Uh, I think uh, what you need to do is you need to model a behavior of showing patience in yourself, so that your child can watch and learn from the same. There's a question by Sangeeta who says, uh, "If the child is reluctant to share his exam fears, how a parent, uh, how can a parent help?" Uh, see, another uh, key here is to have a good relationship with your child. Uh, this cannot be built overnight. It is going to take a long time. You need to spend more time with your child, more quality time with your child. Uh, make sure that your uh, that you are opening up with your child what you can do is maybe open up with your child to begin with so that your child also feels free to do the same and do not react a lot 
or blame them or shout at them when they open up to you because that is a, a very common cause as to why children would stop telling you things if you have reacted react so at, in the previous instance. There's a question by uh, Raja Ram Srinivas who says, uh, How do you set benchmarks? Because the best benchmark is your peers. So, how do you avoid comparing? Uh, now, uh, I think that uh, the benchmark should be set for different children. Though you may use their peers as your benchmark, but do not use that for your child. See how the performance of your child is. Because how your child performs or what uh, the best that your child has done is sort of a benchmark for your child. So that is what you need to be comparing and you need to be encouraging them as much as possible so that they can improve this by themselves. There's a question by uh, Vijay Das who says uh, how to increase concentration span. Uh, see, there are a cert certain exercises that I've already shared uh, in my presentation. There are certain cancellation exercises that you can teach your child. They can take a paragraph from a newspaper or a magazine and, and make them sit and strike out a particular alphabet. For example, say all the A's in that particular uh, paragraph or all the E's in that particular paragraph that will help them improve their concentration. Apart from this, even focusing on a simple uh, instrument in a particular song or tune can help them increase, uh, improve their concentration. Also, solving puzzles and mazes can also improve their concentration. Okay, uh, I'm going to be taking the last question now. Uh, this is by Rashmi. Uh, she says, uh, my child doesn't open up with me uh, in a fear of being wrong, though I totally spend time with him and encourage to open up with me. How to overcome this situation? Uh, again, it is the fear of what the parent might react. It may be because of certain uh, advices or certain things that you have already told your child to begin with, which uh, makes the child assume that you may not be open to what he has or what he or she has to say. So, uh, what you uh, you need to be more friendly with your child. Apart, uh, like I mentioned previously, you need to have firm rules with your children, but also have a uh, a bi-direct uh, uh, relationship with them. That is, you need to share decision making in the family with your child, and uh, and you, you and you should not be judgmental about what they are saying. You should not 
you should not say this is not how it is supposed to be if your child has told you that this is what i have done you need to try and get them to have insight into whether what they have done is right or wrong you cannot always be protective about your children in certain areas because they need to make mistakes and learn by themselves so you cannot uh, stop them from doing that though that is a huge tendency that every parent has that they feel like doing but uh, in certain situations you need to let them learn by themselves unless it is beyond their capability you can uh, surely send in all the rest of the questions uh, to my uh, email id i will be taking in questions queries uh, i'll be happy to answer them so you can mail me at uh, anjana.good at uh, focushealthcare.com uh, i'll be happy to help, uh, answer all your queries and uh, do check out our video on youtube on exam stress releasing tips and techniques where you can find more tips and techniques to uh, deal with exam stress okay, and do uh, remember to like share and subscribe a very good very afternoon, good afternoon. To all the participants of the webinar i'm glad that you have participated in this our initiative by school of india and otis hospital to help children deal with stress Please provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. The link is available in the chat box. Stress is an imminent feature of everyone's life. A toddler is stressed about reaching out to the crystal ball kept on the shelf in just beyond his reach, while a teenager is stressed whether she is cool enough for her friends. School of India is synonymous with school of happiness. children spend more waking hours at school than at home thereby making us responsible for their emotional well-being we provide an atmosphere where every student gets an opportunity to share his or her small and big joys anxieties with the teachers hearing them out will solve half of their problems we just need the patience to do so parents usually think that children will be happy if they score good marks we believe that children will score good marks if they are happy every child has a right to enjoy a happy childhood irrespective of the marks and grades they will all cross the threshold in their own pace it's pointless to be part of a rat race let them run their own race and carve a niche for themselves my sincere gratitude to dr anjana for sharing such valuable light on stress management for school children i hope you all have benefited from the session thank you